channel. I am so excited to do this video. Okay, so y'all know that at the beginning of the year, we um, went to, or we were using Logic of English's foundations level A and B for language arts for the kids. Well, I love, I love the foundations. Um, it's just not working for us. Part of the reason is um, my son, he's just kind of all over the place as far as what he knows and what he doesn't know. Um, he's really good with phonics, but with grammar and sentence structure and all that good stuff, not so much. And foundations wasn't, he wasn't picking it up quickly enough. It wasn't a prominent um, focus in the lower levels and I kind of need it to be because we really need to focus on him um, writing more and um, it just wasn't that wasn't a big focus for the level he was using and um, so I did a lot of research and I know I dropped some serious cash on that curriculum but I felt like the best thing for us to do would be to um, find something that worked we did all about reading and that worked up to level three for us. Then my kid got really bored with it and my, my daughter was really struggling like to the point of tears. I'm like, we're not, we're not going to fight this. And so I did a lot of research kind of over Christmas break and I, I kind of just happened upon the good and the beautiful. I'd never heard of it before, but I was, you know, skimming through YouTube and looking for different things and that just kind of appeared. And, um, so I watched a lot of video reviews on it, checked out the website, did kind of a lot of research about it, and I went ahead and kind of took the plunge in buying the curriculum. First of all, it's a very great price. Um, if you haven't checked it out, you can buy the kits as bundles or you can buy each piece separately. And um, it just, I could buy three courses for what I bought one course for with like Logic of English or some of the other programs. So that being said, what I want to say or what I guess what I want to get into first is about how I decided on what I was picking. So Logic of English is kind of weird because it's got level A, B, C, and D, but it's not really set aside or set up as in a grade level and I kind of understand that because not every kid is going to be reading at a first grade level in first grade but it is slightly helpful when it is sectioned out by grade so you kind of have an idea what you need and and I was just very lost in figuring out what I needed from Logic of English and like I said, it just wasn't really working for us. Now the handwriting part of Logic of English was very, very awesome. I really like that um, because it teaches the child like different strokes before you actually start making the letters. And so there, I could definitely see their handwriting improving. But like I said, the reading part, it just, it wasn't meaty enough. We were getting through the lessons in like 10 minutes a day. And I felt like Maybe for my kindergartner that was enough, but it was not enough for my first grader. I just needed something a little more challenging. And so, not my first grader, sorry, my second grader. So, okay, with the good and the beautiful, it starts with, well, I, I purchased level K. But level K is not necessarily just for kindergartners because I actually purchased along with the level K kit I purchased an additional course book because you need one per child for my second grader because this curriculum is very advanced but they do have assessments for each level so you know exactly what you should be buying for your child so let's go ahead and get started because I don't want this video running super long so in the level K kit you get the level K reader you get a set of kindergarten mini books. You get phonics cards, which are very similar to the All About Reading cards. And these cards are used for, for grades K through, or for levels K through two. So when I bought, I bought the 
the kit, the bundle, the Level K bundle, but when I bought Level 1 for my older child, I bought the pieces individually and saved myself about $6 because I didn't need these cards. What I plan on doing with these is once I've separated them, I'm going to laminate them because I will be using these quite a bit. So you can see, I'll go ahead and show you. It talks about the phonics cards here in the course that tells you about how to use them, but they are very just standard phonics cards on the back. They have the sounds and they have the words or a word to kind of, um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> to kind of mimic that sound or give an example. That's what I'm looking for. Give an example of that sound. So for S, obviously we know it makes the S and the Z sound. So you have S for sat and Z for is. I find that I find that helpful and I noticed I guess it's you know once we're an adults and we know how to read we don't think about it very often but if you just say this letter makes these two sounds they may not grasp it or pick it up quickly um, or as quickly as you want them to but then if you're like it says this like this word then they're like oh, okay I make the connect I, you know they make the connection so the phonics you've got you know, quite a few phonics cards. And then you have some, they're more sight words and phonics, I guess, mixed together. So, and you can see. So there's a bunch of them. There's a hundred and, what does it say? 164. You don't need all of them for each level. For instance, it'll say, it says, okay, Level K, you only need one through eight or one through fifty-eight. Um, level one, you only need one through one twenty-four, and level two, you only need uh, or level two, you need all of them. But it's kind of handy that they tell you, you know, if you're just using level K at the moment, you don't have to go through and separate all of them unless you want to. So those are the phonics cards, and the last thing you get is the course book. So I'm going to show you the kindergarten mini books and the reader first. One thing I really appreciate about this curriculum and this company, and it may seem simple to some people, but the bindings and the paper quality that they've used on these materials for the price that you're getting them at is amazing. The, if you, you can see, because of the light, the shine, this is a thick, glossy paper, and the pictures are colored. It's not all black and white. And it just amazes me because I feel like you are getting such a good quality of material, even besides the whole, the actual, um, you know, the curriculum itself, just the materials used to make the curriculum are so, um, just a very nice quality. Okay, so the mini books, one page is a mini book and it gives you instructions on the front on how to cut or fold and put them together. So one page is a mini book. And the cool thing about this curriculum also that you will see in the reader and the mini books is that the pictures are, are extremely varied. So you have realistic pictures, excuse me. You have some clip art. Um, and, and the pictures are, are different. And I just, I'm just so blown away by the detail that has gone into this curriculum for the price. Because we all know there are some seriously expensive curriculums out there. And it's all black and white. And the paper quality is just your typical paper quality. And you can tell that whoever, well, I guess it's Jenny Phillips is the one who has created this but you can see the love and attention and detail that has gone into this uh, curriculum and the materials so this is what all the pictures look like on the mini books some are black and white but that's kind of neat too I like that some of them are the old time old timey pictures just kind of skipping through it very quick you get a lot of them there are a lot of mini books for the level K. 
But those are fun because it's an extra activity, something different each day. It's not the same thing every day. Okay, so we've went up, we've gone over the phonics cards and the mini books. Now you have the level K reader. Super nice laminated, not just cardstock, but laminated, very well bound book. It has the table of contents here for all the different stories. And then here it says section one. After completing Lesson 12 in Level K course book, the child should read and reread this section until he or she can read most of the words without too much hesitation. So, you're not just going to use this once, which a lot of programs are like that. You get a reader and you just read the story once and you're done. You're not just going to read through this once. They're going to read through a couple times until they've mastered a lot of those words. And because the picture quality and the story quality are so varied and, and just nice, I don't see it being like an issue like, oh, we read that already. Do we have to read it again? Um, I think that they're really going to enjoy these. And so the pictures, and you can see like it starts out super, the, the uh, sentence structure is super super easy and then when you get to the end here for level k it's obviously a little more difficult but you can see the pictures throughout here are just gorgeous they're so gorgeous it's very it's like the dick and jane books which were before my time i actually have quite a few of them because my aunt who was much older than my mom was a teacher and she gave me a lot of her old books that they use because she was an English teacher. So I'm excited to use those alongside these. But so that's the Level K reader. And all of that material, the mini books and the reader and the phonics cards, you can use for multiple children. Like I said before, you need an a course book for each child so that's why I bought an extra one which I appreciate the f the fact that you can buy them um, separately and not in you know you don't have to buy a whole pack for each child so the course book I know this is something the thing that you guys are wanting to see the most so when you open up the course book it has the at a glance so it talks about phonics and reading, grammar usage and punctuation, and other, basically what your child is going to be getting with this course. I'm gonna try to pop, prop that up a little bit so you can see it better. Here we have the table of contents. There are 47 lessons. Now that doesn't mean that, um, you know, that you're gonna go through it quickly because some of the lessons you may need to hang out there for a little bit longer and some of the lessons you may go through pretty quickly. But the lessons are very um, diverse. There's a lot going on. I know it even says in the book or in the course book here that you may um, finish a lot of say lesson one just for instance, say you finish up almost everything from lesson one and move on to lesson two, but you still may be working on spelling or whatnot in lesson one before, before you move on. And I like that you have kind of that option that you don't have to, I guess it's more working at your own child's pace and they acknowledge that, so that's pretty cool. So in the front part of the, the book, it's got about this course, what this course covers, an overview, principles behind this course, commonly asked questions, how to get started, items needed for courses, the level K reader, how to teach each day, making it work with multiple children, how spelling works, not rushing or skipping lessons, assessments and teacher read alouds and then the mini books so it gives you all the information there the awesome thing about this um, curriculum is there's almost absolutely zero prep for you as a parent which I really appreciate which was one of the issues with 
the foundations of English and the all about reading because they, you know, obviously you have the lesson and you have an activity, but there were additional activities listed, which was cool that you could do with your kid, but they required quite a bit of prep. And I'm prepping for three kids because none of mine are at the level where they can do reading or math on their own. So I have to do individual time with each of them during the day, along with prepping for science, prepping for history, prepping for Bible, you know, all of that. And so I needed something that wasn't going to be crazy amounts of prepping. And that's where this curriculum kind of comes in and, and um, fixes that for me, I guess. So here is the assessment before starting the level K course. So you see that chart down here with all the letters. So what you're going to do with your child is you're going to go through each letter and you are going to point to the letter and ask them to name the letter, say the sound of the letter, and tell you whether it is a capital letter or a lowercase letter. And you do not start this course at all until they can give you the correct answer for all of those. Now that doesn't mean grilling them for two hours one day. What I would do, and like we haven't even started this, so when I go through this with my daughter, because my son will know this, but if we go through this with my daughter, who is kindergarten age, if she, if there are a few of those that she messes up on, what we will probably do is I'll let her know, you know, this is what this letter says, or, you know, this is the name of this letter. Then we may play, I've got a few like alphabet games, we may play one of those, and then we'll come back the next day. And if she passes it, that's great. And if not, we'll kind of work on it and then move on again. But I'm not, I'm not going to force it down her throat just so that we can start. I want to make sure she really knows her letters and her letter sounds before we move on. Because I don't want to start a course and then get stuck or get her upset because she's struggling because she's not ready for it. So here it talks about the phonics cards. Really cool thing about this curriculum. When you complete certain sections, you get to color pictures. So here it's cards 1 through 18 of pho the phonics cards, cards 19 through 37, cards 38 to 58. Once you complete those cards, you get to color a picture. So you are not just checking off a list as a parent, but the child actually has an interactive checklist per se that they get to work with. Here it talks about the sight words and you have the sight word ladders. And I think there's 12 of these. Yeah. So each time they master a list, you can check it and then it tells underneath each list what picture they can color. So this says color the cow, color the goat, color the pig. Over here you have the picture that they get to color. So they can visually see how they're progressing through this material. Here it talks about spelling words, recommended uh, methods of practicing spelling, which is, it's very close to, and we've never done it, but I've heard people say it's very close to spelling power, whereas you have a list and you go down the list and once you make the decision, so once they, you say, okay, we're gonna, once they get to five words, they don't know we're gonna stop. So if they get through this whole list and they spell them all right, then you're good, you move on to the next one. And then say you get to five words in this list that they can't spell, you stop, and then that's when you implement the different techniques for practicing your spelling words. And so um, that is what is kind of co uh, covered in this section. This is another thing like the phonics cards, once they master a list or a chart, they get to color a picture which is really super cute. Another thing this course does is poetry memorization. We have not really worked on poetry. Um, you know, we've done nursery rhymes and things, but this just isn't something we focused on. I love poetry. I am a big, big, big poetry fan. Um, it was something that was kind of, I was read a lot of poetry, E.B. White, Robert Frost, those kind of things. Um, but it wasn't something in school that we really studied. And so it wasn't something I thought about like my kids would need. But this is a really cool thing because it's not just about these poems themselves. You're not 
memorizing them because they're like some big name poem. They're not, these are just little poems. Um, some of them, the author of the curriculum is made up, but it's a good thing for them to get used to memorizing stuff. Um, we memorize one hymn a month. We take almost like the first line of each uh, of a hymn because most of them have like four lines in each verse. Um, and we memorize them each month. And it's just good practice for them to get used to memorizing things. It's a good skill for them to have. So it talks about that in the poetry memorization. It shows you all the poems that you'll be using throughout the curriculum. And so, okay, so this is um, lesson one, and this is kind of an assessment, and it says, if your child passes this assessment without any like mistakes, skip the first lesson, move on. So I, I, it's kind of nice that they acknowledge that. So this is what the first lesson, the first two pages look like. We're, you're gonna cover vowels and consonants, short and long vowel sounds. Here in the black, it tells you what, it basically gives you what um, you're going to say. So you just read what it tells you and then the blue are the instructions and um, and then it gives you kind of like what the child should answer and if they don't answer, this is what you do. You know, if they don't answer correctly, this is what you do. Um, so over here, you've got some pictures to circle um, and then you've got, depending on if it's short or long vowel sounds, down here they have you writing or have the child writing A, E, I, O, U, and Y. Once again, you've got some more pictures to circle or cross out depending on the instructions for the vowel sounds. Here you talk about the sounds and here you talk about the, the fact that there are 26 letters in the alphabet and then they trace the number 26 three times. And then over here, it's kind of the same thing. There's a little repetition, but you know, with kindergartners, sometimes repetition is, um, is kind of needed. It's not too much repetition in my opinion. It's not the same thing every day um, or every lesson, um, but it's just enough to kind of help it to stick in there, in their little brains. So number two, and here it's talking about poetry. So you're gonna be working on poetry. Here's an assessment for lesson three. Um, one thing I was worried about when I first opened this curriculum and I was looking at it, I was thinking to myself, oh no, it's covering phonics and sight words, but it's not covering how to blend sounds together to make words, to read, because you need to know how to do that to read. Um, and But it does. In lesson three, it starts talking about how it says, um, you know, read this to the child. Today we are going to read some short words. First say the sound for each letter. Use the short sound for the vowels, then put the sounds together. So it's got it separated at the top. So I, t, and then you work on squishing or blending or however you want to, however you tell your child to do it, those letters together to make a sound or a word. So the level K um, course, like I said, is definitely, there are, the activities are varied, but there definitely is some repetition as to the activities themselves. But I understand because you really, really, really need that basis, that foundation of phonics before you move on. And I love that the pictures are colored. Here comes the um, the art appreciation into play because that's part of this curriculum. Um, you get to do an activity, but it's based around these famous paintings, which is pretty awesome. And so I'm gonna flip through this. Just trying to prop, trying to prop that up so you guys can see it a little better. And it just keeps wanting to slide, which I should have known that was gonna happen, but that's okay. So, you can see how colorful it is, how we have these different activities. You know, all of these are um, bright and bold and colorful and fun, and it's gonna keep them engaged is what I, that's one thing I really struggle with with my son. Not my daughter, she's 
she loves school, but my son, he, he struggles because he just doesn't want to do it. I get it. Nobody wants to have to sit and be told what to do, but, um, so that's part of the reason why I chose this. I really needed an engaging language arts program, and I think this is going to be the one. So at the end of the course book, you have charts and assessments. So throughout the book, throughout the course, they'll tell you when you need to assess your child, which is really awesome because you can see how they are doing as you move through the course. And so that's kind of nice to know. And then you've got these sight word charts in the back. So that is level K. So when we start up, and we are going to start next Tuesday. I'm going to go ahead and start, or I guess this upcoming Tuesday. We are going to go ahead and start this new program. So my daughter and my son are both going to start this. I feel like my son is going to get through level K pretty quickly. Um, but I just want to make sure that he is where he needs to be before we move on to level one. So I'm going to show you level one. It's very similar to level K. So you have the mini books. And you can see very high quality paper, fun pictures, colorful. Just obviously a little bit more difficult sentence structure and things like that because it's a higher level. Then you have the reader. And this one, it tells you um, when you get to lesson 24 in the level one course book, the child should read five to eight pages of this reader out loud to a parent or teacher each day as you continue with the course book. Once the child has read the whole reader out loud, he or she should read it again out loud on his or her own if possible. So kind of like the K, the level K reader, we're going to go through this, but then once you have finished it, we're going to go back and work on it again just to make sure we've kind of mastered um, the words and things that we are working on through this course. So, and, and you know, it says read five to eight pages as you move through the course once you get to level 24. If your child gets hung up on a story, you don't have to just keep pushing them through because you're moving through the course. Work on that story. Don't, um, don't you know, don't shove it down their throat. Um, because you want to move on because you feel like they're getting behind, um, you know, that's something where you can, you can say, okay, let's pause. Let's work on this together. Let's go slowly. Let's make sure that, um, you know, you're getting what you need to out of this and that, you don't want them to just, you don't want to just push them through it to get it done. There's so many kids in the public school system that fall through the cracks because the teachers are overwhelmed with the class size and they cannot work individually with each student. And there are so many parents that work and they just are tired and I get it. And they don't, you know, really don't have the time um, sometimes if you've got multiple children to to focus on that, which is one of the reasons why we chose homeschool because I know my children and I want them to have the individual one-on-one -on -one time, even though it's still, with, with three kids, it's a struggle. I can't imagine having that many kids. I taught pre-K for a while and I had 21 kids and that is insane. So anyway, the readers, awesome. Pictures are awesome. Stories are awesome. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention, this is a non-denominational Christian um, curriculum. So. It does talk about God in it. Um, I know like the science stuff talks, um, I think it talks about creation and the beginning of the science unit studies. And in here it talks about God, but these stories are so wholesome. They are so innocent. They are so positive. I just, I'm, I'm so excited to get started with this because, um, you know, it's not something I'm gonna have to worry too much about as far as the content. Okay, here's the level one reader. Or the, sorry, the level one course book. We just finished the level one reader. So here you have the level at a glance. 
Um, it covers phonics and reading, grammar usage and punctuation, art, literature, spelling, and writing. And writing is the big one I really wanted to focus on. Obviously, I want my kid to read, but we're, we're doing good with the phonics. The writing is almost like non-existent, so we really need to focus on that. Here you have the daily checklist. This is just a suggestion. You know your child, so you know if um, it is something that they can handle or maybe you need to um, kind of scale it back um, each day or each lesson. So this says, have the child read um, the good and the beautiful level one reader aloud for at least 10 minutes on his or her own a day once you've gotten to level 24. Practice spelling words for five to 10 minutes. Practice phonics cards for five minutes. Practice sight word ladders for five minutes. Complete 30 to 40 minutes in the course book and work on poetry memorization one to two times a week. Once again, you know your child. You know if that's too much or if you, you know maybe your child wants to do more, but you kind of gauge it based on your child. So here's the table of contents. There are 91 lessons. So, you know, as far as how many you do each week, that's really up to you. Um, we are schooling four days this uh, year, four days a week, because we're doing co-op on Thursdays. And um, so we are right now at this point just doing four days a week. And so we have been doing language arts every single day that we school. But you don't have to do that, you know. You can always do a less, like maybe do three lessons a week if you're doing a four day week. And then on the fourth day, do a, a game or something that kind of incorporates that. It's up to you. So this is about the course, very similar to the level K, talking about how to use it. So here you've got, talks about the phonics cards and the pictures to color. Here you've got the sight word ladders and the pictures over here to color once you've mastered them. Obviously there's more because it's a little bit more difficult course. Here you have the spelling words, the spelling word charts, and the little picture checklist to color. The poetry memorization, and then the poems that you'll be using. Here is the assessment. This is lesson one is actually the, um, the assessment. If your child cannot finish or complete this assessment based on the requirements that are listed, then you need to stop. And what we're doing or what I'm doing is going through level K first. But you need to stop and work on the area that they're having trouble with. Because if you try to continue on, even though they say they only missed two questions, well, when that stuff comes up, say it's a grammar thing, when that starts popping up, they're not gonna know it and you're gonna struggle and they're gonna struggle and it's gonna be a fight. So don't try to push your child into it just because you think, oh, they should be in level one. It's not a race, every child's different. You wanna make sure they have a good foundation so that as they grow and learn, they're not missing pieces, you know, that they need to have to be able to be a good reader or a good writer and so forth. So here is lesson two. It's just a phonogram review. Very simple. Same thing for lesson three. Um, a lot of lesson or level one is review in the beginning, which is nice because, um, they can always, you know, they can always use review when it comes to phonics and things like that. Poetry, some more phonogram review. You've got different phonogram sound review blends. You've got games. This is a, you know, art appreciation. So you're using famous pieces of art with your activities. Level eight, phon more phonogram review. Um, silent E. Some of the lessons are longer, some of them are shorter. Syllables, poetry, the double E. You've got all these different types of activities. You can see as I'm flipping through here, and you probably saw in the level K, the lessons do not look anything 
like the one before it. That is extremely varied and diverse, so you do not have to worry about your child getting bored because you're doing the same thing every day. It is something completely different. And I'm just still blown away by the quality, and you can tell the time that was put into this curriculum. It just, it's amazing to me for the price too. And a lot of this, guess what? You can download a lot of this for free. If you want to print it off yourself, you can download a lot of this for free. It's amazing. It just, it blows my mind. So lesson 91, the last lesson in this course, commas and dates. This is one thing. We, t you know, my kids know the calendars. They know, you know, the dates and stuff like that, months and years. But we don't practice putting dates on anything at this point because, you know, when you're in school, you put your name and date on the page. But when you're homeschooled, you don't think about this. I appreciate these little things that you sometimes forget, oh, we need, to, we need to work on that because you're not using it like this set common core standard curriculum, you know, that's being pushed by the state or whatever. So after you finish the lessons, there is also a charts and an assessment um, section here. So once again, you've got assessments for their reading, you got uh, sight word charts, review charts for different sentences, and there's areas here. So they read these sentences and you put the time that it takes them to read and you've got multiple times where, or multiple instances where you time them reading these sentences to see how they progress throughout the curriculum. So that is the level one course book. The last thing I'm gonna show you is the pre-K curriculum. This is such a cute, cute curriculum. I'm so excited. So I told you the language arts curriculum is almost like zero prep. This one has a little bit of prep, but it's not anything big. So the pre-K course covers letters and sounds, vowels, numbers, colors, motor skills, sorting, matching, and rhyming. So what you get with the pre-K bundle, you get the activity packet. And um, it talks about, it gives you instructions. Um, you know, a lot of this stuff needs to be cut out because it's for games um, within the course. Now, it's on pretty thick cardstock. You could laminate it if you want. I probably won't just because my pre-K kid is my last kid. <laughs> so I won't be doing pre-K anymore after he's through it. So this is just for him. So those are, I mean, look at those pretty colors on all of those activity pages. I just, I just cannot get over for the price of the curriculum, the quality of the materials. Then you also have these fun little letter charts. So you have A to F, G to L, M to S, and T to Z. And so what these are, these are flip books. And so what you're gonna do is, if you can see there are little dotted lines, you're gonna cut through those dotted lines. And so you have a low or an uppercase letter, a lowercase letter, and a picture that starts with one of the letters in the flip book. And your child has to match them up. So for instance, here we have an uppercase U. You need to find the lowercase U in the picture. Well, here's umbrella. So we know that goes with U, but now we've got to find, so when they're flipping through the three little tabs, they can find it and match it up. So you have those for all of the letters of the alphabet. Alphabet, sorry. And uh, these would work really well too for even your kindergartner. If, for instance, um, you have started to work on the level K, but they're still kind of um, behind a little bit, or not even behind, but just they're they're missing some letter sounds, I guess. 
this would be a fun way to work on those letter sounds and work on uppercase and lowercase letters. So that's awesome. Here's the pre-K course book. Talks about the course once again. Talks about all the extra items needed. And it'll tell you what lesson. For instance, lesson four, you need a large clothespin. Awesome. Cool thing about that is you can go through this, get all of those items um, ready and handy so that you don't have to go looking for them when you sit down to do the lesson. So here is unit one, lesson one. And it says, items needed scissors. Once again, it'll say, read this to the child. So the words in black are what you read to the child. Down here we have this cute little picture in the poem. And then in lesson one, we're working on the letter A. So you're talking about uppercase A and lowercase A. They work on tracing the letter. This is not a handwriting program and this isn't about mastery of handwriting. This is just to get them used to um, holding a pencil, holding it correctly, and getting in the rhythm of how these letters are written. You have an activity down here, circle all of the lowercase a's, and then over here you've got a cutting activity. So this is one where if you have more than one pre-K child, you're going to need um, a course book for each one because this is a consumable. And then over here, lesson two, we're working on lowercase a. Lesson three is B. Over here you have a little piece of art, so you're even doing art appreciation with the pre-K child. It's got a little activity to do. And so it's kind of like a letter a day, um, or a letter per lesson, I guess. It's not even a letter a day. Um, but there are so many really awesome activities. It's super colorful. My little guy is gonna absolutely love this. He's gonna have a lot of fun doing this. I'm gonna have a lot of fun doing it with them. I definitely won't lie. And then once again, you use the stuff in the activity packet to go along with the lessons in here. So, I really, really hope that this has helped any of you that may be thinking about this program or maybe you haven't even heard of this program and you're looking for something for your child. I'm really excited about this program. And if you have any comments, just post them below in the comments section. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe because that would be awesome. Um, thanks for watching. I hope you all have a good day and I will see you next time. Bye.